My name is Jen, and I am a Glocal. Now, a lot of you will be sitting there wondering, what the heck is a Glocal? And you're right to wonder. I sometimes even wonder myself, and I'm up here talking about it. Because right now, it's an idea in my mind. It's a lifestyle I believe I'm leading, and I believe many other people are leading, but they don't have a word to define it. I don't have a set guideline, a set of rules, a step-by-step -step set of instructions for you on being a Glocal, but what I have is an idea. Many of you might be familiar with the word glocalization. This is a word used by business to describe the process by which they assimilate. They adapt their products and their services to appeal to the needs and, more importantly, the wants of local communities and societies to boost sales and increase profits. I want to take this word back. I want to take it back and redefine it. I want to turn it from something that's about profit and consumerism and turn it into something far more powerful. I want to define Glocal as the global local. Individuals who open themselves to the challenges that we're facing around the world, be daunted, be scared, but find the optimism that is necessary to act in the face of those challenges. Paul Coelho once said, every person on the planet plays a central role in the history of the world. I believe he was right. We all need to see ourselves, individuals, and our communities as spheres of change. I've always believed in the local and the individual as spheres of change. However, I didn't grow up, nor did I spend my formative years in a small community. At the age of 11, I moved from London, Ontario to Oxford, England with my parents. I spent my time there doing my high school, I did both of my degrees in London, and I took every opportunity I had to travel, to adventure, to expose myself to as many different societies, different cultures as I possibly could, and learn as much as I possibly could about what fascinated me most, which was human and environment interaction and how to change the world for the better. I believe that it was my 15 years in England, traveling abroad, that allowed me to create the lifestyle that I see as being a global citizen. I always thought big, dreamt big. I spent as much time as I possibly could getting involved in social and environmental responsibility projects, and they inspired me to start my own film company to showcase these projects. I traveled around the world believing that mass communication of the mission and the vision of these people and these groups was the way to instigate global change. I still believe this, but I believe it is just one tool in a toolbox that we have to change the world. At that time, when I was living there, and even up to a year ago, I wouldn't necessarily have defined myself as a Glocal. As I said, I dreamt big. I took part and led several international expeditions around the world, and the latest one, which you heard, I sailed across the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, as part of a crew of 14 women on a mission to make the unseen seen, from the plastics and toxics in our oceans to those in our own bodies. Now, when I signed up, I had never sailed before. So, as much as the experience was exciting, it was hugely daunting, but it wasn't nearly as frightening as the issue we were highlighting. The presence and proliferation of plastics and toxics in the ocean, these little microplastics acting as sponges for toxics and chemicals that harm wildlife and through the food chain eventually lead to detrimental human health. As part of this trip and this journey, I have to admit, hands up. Before I signed up, I actually had no idea about plastics and toxics in the ocean. And this was pretty shocking to me, considering I had spent much of my time and believed myself to be incredibly knowledgeable about human and environmental health. So I struggled when I first signed up. I was excited about the trip. I've always been excited about adventure. But I became extremely dismayed to learn about this actual issue. I felt disheartened, I felt 
scared. But instead of turning away, I tried to open myself up, to allow myself to accept that this problem exists, and that maybe, just maybe, me and this crew and whoever else followed us and might get involved could change the world. This was a big project. It was global. We had an international team. It was a global problem that demanded global solutions. And I'm extremely proud of what we've done. We sailed across the ocean. We collected research. We have published papers. We have disseminated our research. I, I was the filmmaker on the team, so I produced a feature-length documentary, which has been shared in far, far and wide, and hopefully will continue to do so. But most importantly for me, I think the most powerful thing that has come out of this project and out of this trip was seeing and experiencing local action because of what we were doing. How did I experience this local action? Well, six months before I set sail with my team, I moved. I moved from a global city, London, England, with a population of 8.3 million people to just outside a little village in southwestern Ontario, Bayfield, with a population year-round just shy of 1,000. I had an opportunity. Why did I move? I had an opportunity, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, to set up an environmentally friendly outdoor recreation park. For someone like me, whose life is based around adventure, getting outdoors, encouraging others to do the same, it was too perfect. I couldn't pass up this opportunity. But it wasn't an easy process. Moving from somewhere I, that had been home, where I had grown up, where I had networks, I had used it as my base for change, how I believed I was going to contribute to the world, and I had no idea what I was heading into. What was going to be there for me? Was there even going to be people who thought the same, who cared, who were open? And I was nothing but surprised when I moved there. What I found instead was a community of locals. I found people who were not only open to the issues I was talking about, the things I cared about, plastics in the ocean, poverty, whatever it was, not only were they open, but they experienced and understood these problems as not only out there, but right here. Plastics are a perfect example. They are not just out there in the oceans. They are here in the Great Lakes. They are here in our backyard. And my next project is exploring the Great Lakes plastics and toxics. But what these people showed me is that not only were they open to these issues, understood that they exist, were scared by them, but they were willing to act, and they acted with guts and optimism and energy. Optimism is key. It's a hard thing to find. I'm only human. And there are days when I wake up and I'm just overwhelmed by the world and the problems that we face. But it is key. In my latest talk, I got asked by someone, how do you have optimism? And I broke it down, I think, into two things. One is who I choose to surround myself with. And now, part of that is my community, which I never expected. And number two is asking myself a question and understanding it, understanding it is a daily choice. What am I or anyone or anything going to gain? from being anything but optimistic. And on days when I feel low, like I can't motivate myself, I think to someone who for me epitomizes what it means to be a local. And regardless of whether you're religious or not, I think we can all agree that Mother Teresa was a pretty incredible person. And she said, I alone cannot change the world, but I can cast a stone across the waters and create many ripples. I am not asking people to change their lifestyle wholly. I'm not asking you to sail oceans, sell all your worldly belongings, move into the forest and forage for your food. What I'm asking you to do is open your mindset, open yourself to issues, find optimism to act.
cast the stones, create the ripples. Many of you will be familiar with the phrase, think global, act local. I love this phrase, but it's only the first step, a powerful first step in what I believe is being global. We need to push it farther. We need to understand that that acting local instigates global change. We need to understand it's not just think global, act local. You are acting and you are thinking on both levels and every level in between. You have to believe that your actions will accumulate, that they will join the ranks of the actions of your family, of your community, of your province, of your country, of countries nearby you and far away, even on the other side of the planet. It is important to do that. That belief in ourselves as individuals, in our communities, is where our true power lies. My community has shown me that. It has shown that my actions and my words are being listened to. My global, my local lifestyle is not going ignored or unnoticed. People are listening. People are learning. And people, most importantly, are acting. You and I, there's no difference between us. We are all people on this path called life, on this planet we call home. We have a choice every day when we wake up to act for the better of the planet, the people around us, and believe that those actions are better for everyone. Yesterday was Earth Day. For me, Earth Day is not an annual occurrence, one day where I choose to think about how my life impacts the world around me. It is my daily life. So I leave you with this, no rules, no guidelines, no step-by-step -step instructions, just words as food for thought. Be passionate, be open, act, and most importantly, be optimistic. And if you believe that the energy, the action, the movement, whatever it is, doesn't exist where you are, this important sphere of change, create it. Thank you.